Well, just wanted to tell you about an idea that I have and I want to get your comments and your response and your likes on this idea. What I was thinking about doing is a video series and it'll be just short videos like say five or ten minutes long and basically we'll just call it a fireside chat with Greg. And basically what it'll be is I figure once a month I'll just do a video, it'll just be short. And what it'll do is give me a chance to tell some stories of my, well, say career. There will be bushcraft stories, true survival stories. There will be just maybe interesting things that happened to me as a kid or funny things that happened. Um, on a job site, just random stories throughout my life. So if you like this idea, let's get a lot of likes for this video. This is episode one. This will give you an opportunity to get to know me better and understand me better. Some of the stories will be funny, some are tragic, some are exciting, and some are just maybe interesting. Usually I'll probably be sitting around a fire maybe cooking something as well. To make it a little more interesting but I think you'll find that some of the stories are so amazing and interesting anyway I mean it would probably take me the next 10 years to tell all these stories some will be more interesting to some people than others but I think there'll be something for everyone so let's see how we get us what kind of a response we get to this video and this story and if you like the idea let's get a lot of likes and a lot of shares. Episode one, Fireside Chat with Greg. Years ago, my daughters, they were about 15 or 16, and I was taking them grouse hunting. We were way up the Bull River, which is about two hours from here, I suppose. I had the truck loaded. We did have food and blankets, and we were all prepared. It was September, sometime in September. I can't really remember what year it was. Um, I could do the math. I suppose I should have done that before the story. Uh, anyway, I had an old 79 Bronco. I had posi track in the back of this truck, so it, it actually really went places. We found a spot to camp. I, I got out of the truck, and the first thing I was doing was collecting firewood, and I was getting the fire going. And uh, the next thing I know, I hear the truck fire up, and I hear these kids laughing and they just drive away. Okay, now we're out in an area where there was a lot of side roads. And I'm calling them, get back here, you know. Well, did they listen? No, they just kept laughing and driving away. So now I'm sitting there, okay, well I continued to get the fire going. I got the fire all nice and I collected a bunch of firewood. And it was only maybe two hours before it was going to be dark out. And I'm waiting, hour goes by. Nope, they don't come back. Two hours go by. Nope, they don't come back. Well now I'm starting to get a little frustrated. It's starting to get dark now. Still, they're not back with my truck. And, like, and I hadn't even unpacked any of the gear. I didn't have my coat on. Uh, they had all the bedding, the food, everything. So it was all in the truck. I hadn't unloaded any of this, this gear. So now it's dark and I'm sitting by the fire and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. Hour goes by, like I say, two hours go by, three hours go by, four, five, six hours go by. They're not back. Well, now I'm starting to panic. I almost felt like I was going to have a nervous breakdown over these kids just taking off. Now all the worst case scenarios go through your mind. You're thinking, what happened? Did they go off a cliff? What happened to these kids? And now in the pitch black, how am I even gonna on foot go looking for these kids? Well, now I gotta go on foot and look for these girls. So I started heading down the back road following the truck tracks. Now that it's light, I can actually go looking, I guess. But where do you go? I mean, there were side roads everywhere in this area. If I didn't follow the tracks properly, 
I could be walking around all day looking for these girls. And I was still so stressed out of what might have happened because, you know, not even, you, you teenagers, I mean, these are teenage years, so boy, oh boy, don't do this to your parents, you teenagers. I mean, you can't imagine the stress and anxiety and, and that you put your parents through when you do these kind of things. And this wasn't the first time that this happened with these girls, but I'll finish the story and then I'll explain. I'm walking down the road and I hear a vehicle. It turns out to be a buddy of mine that all of us had gone camping in the past. I used to do a lot of fishing with this. Uh, Warren was his name. He showed up in his forerunner and we started looking for these girls in the truck now. At least we, now I got a truck. I can cover more ground than on foot. But you're still thinking the worst case scenarios. This is the problem. And we're driving along and we get to this spot where there was an embankment and I see my truck down the bank. Well now, again, the anxiety level is just horrendous. Well, we drive up and we get close to the truck and then I see two heads pop up looking outside. What a relief, I'm telling you. I was just so relieved to see them in that truck, you know. So now, I mean, it's hard to even get mad at them. You're just so relieved that there they are and they're okay. They had, they weren't paying attention as they told me and they went on a corner and just drove straight and straight down the bank. And even with this truck, as good as it was, they couldn't get back out, they were stuck. So they spent the night in the truck, they had the blankets, the food, and they were all good and great. But what a relief, what a relief that was. So, that's an interesting story, that's episode one, and uh, stay tuned for the next one, there's always going to be an interesting story. This was kind of a story where, it was almost a tragic story, but I'll tell you, man, anxiety can kill you, man. I just, I, I couldn't believe the anxiety that I went through on that camping trip. You know, I remember when I was a kid. Uh, listening to grandma's stories of the old days, you know, in the 20s and 30s. and Boy, she had some fascinating stories to tell. And even though I heard them probably a hundred times throughout my life, I always would listen to them again. So hopefully you'll find these stories as interesting as grandma's used to be. I remember also I met Morris Kuchansky, who uh, Wikipedia calls the godfather of survival and bushcraft and I spent hours and a few days listening to his stories for hours on end and I never got tired of his stories. They were so interesting, so true to life and you learn so much from other people's stories and so I hope that you find a fireside chat with Greg as interesting as Grandma and Morris's old stories. Right on. See you on the next one. So I learned with my daughters that don't even stop for a pee unless you've got the key. It took me three times to figure that out.